Hi, this is Doug Klein with Database by Doug uh, with a video on simple recursion and this is by viewer request so I hope this helps. I'm going to use the Northwind database and as some context data in the real world is commonly hierarchical or a pyramid in structure. In structure. So the way we model this with a relational database is using a table that relates to itself in a one-to-many manner. Another way of saying that is that it has a foreign key that references the primary key in itself. So a table with a foreign key that references itself. Now to get records from the hierarchy we need to do recursion and we don't necessarily need to do recursion to get the records but if we want to get the entire hierarchy we need some special construct to get the entire hierarchy. So we're going to use the employees table and just to focus down onto the records that we're interested in, or I'm sorry, the columns that we're interested in, we have the employee ID, the last name of the employee, and then who they report to. And notice this is the self-referencing part. This is the foreign key that represents the employee ID of the employee that Devolio reports to. So Devolio reports to Fuller, Leverling, reports to Fuller. So maybe a more, more uh, descriptive way of saying this is that this column is the employee ID of their boss. So Devolio 2 represents the employee ID in the same table of their boss. And maybe a little more succinctly, boss ID. Right? So um, in order to join, so, so what I'm seeing is I can get a record here for each record in the table, but I don't really, it would be nice to show Fuller's name in the next column. In other words, the boss's last name in the same column. Now to do this, what we need is a way of aliasing these fields or these tables. So here's how you do it. Uh, employees as employee and employees as boss. So notice I've included this table in the query twice. You can think of the database engine as creating two copies of this table and joining them. Now how the database engine actually does it is uh, there may or may not be that way, but logically that's what's happening. These are treated as separate tables for the context of this query. So, and also notice that I'm joining these two tables, employee.reports2 equals boss.employee ID. So, I'm joining them in a very specific way that is consistent with the way I've renamed them. If we look at the results, we see now Devolio reports to 2, uh, ID 2, and there's ID 2, and that's Fuller. So, these three columns here are coming from the employee copy of the table and these two columns are coming from the boss part of the table and this these two columns always being equal represents and proves that I'm uh, I'm accomplishing the join where those two columns are equal now this whole thing about naming consistency and being con having the names be consistent in the way that they're joined, I always struggle with a little bit and I like to visualize it so that I can see the join and make sure that I've done it logically correct. So I'm using the query designer to show the join. So here I have two copies of the table. One of, I've, one of them I've called employee and one of them I've called boss, uh, which I name which doesn't really matter until I want to join them. So notice that I have said that employee, uh, the, the way to think of this is that employees report to bosses. Bosses don't report to employees. So again, this this line here from employee.reports to to boss.employee ID is consistent with how I've done the join and consistent with the way I've aliased the tables. I typically have to draw a picture or look at it in this manner in order to make sure that I've, I've gotten the join correct. So there is how I do a self-referencing uh, query and 
I need to alias in order to do that. Um, one of the subtleties is notice that I've missed somebody. The look, Fuller isn't showing up as an employee. Well, that's because Fuller has a null reports to, so that record doesn't satisfy the join. If I want to see that, I need to do a left join, and now I see Fuller and note that uh, Fuller's reports to is null, and therefore I have a null record there. So everything I've done up just above here is from the employee perspective and who their boss is. So I have employees primarily and then who's their boss. But I can also look at this, so that's kind of from the bottom up, from an employee looking up at their boss. And I can also do this from the boss perspective, looking down at the employees. So here what we see is Fuller has five people who reports to him or her. And, um, but the, the thing to realize is that my join and the way I've named the tables has not changed. The only thing that changed in those two versions of the query were the order of the columns from left to right and the order of the records. So I'm, I'm ordering by the boss ID here. So, uh, what I'm trying to point out is once you have a way of self-referencing and self-joining, that works all the time. It's the way that the, the table is designed, it's the way the data is modeled, and once you get that uh, self-referencing join right and the aliasing right, then you can use it over and over and over again. Now, um, one problem or the, the limitation of this is notice that I'm only going one level. So if I look at the data, I can see that Fuller reports to Buchanan, but Buchanan also, or I'm sorry, Fuller has Buchanan who reports to Fuller, and Buchanan, though, has people underneath them. So to see this a little bit better, I'm going to do a, um, a grouping and do some counts here. And what we see is Fuller has five people underneath, but we know that one of those five is Buchanan. Buchanan has three. And I know that Suyama reports to Buchanan, so there's one there, and Klein reports to Suyama. So if I wanted to get the number of people underneath Fuller, I really should add all of these up. So, um, and that represents the full hierarchy. So these joins that I've been doing self-referencing are only one level at a time. They're between a, a boss and an employee, but they don't reach the full hierarchy. In order to get the full hierarchy, we need recursion. And in order to do recursion, there's a special construct called a common table expression, or a CTE. I'm going to run it, and I've, I've created two versions of this code. And it's, it's a little bit lengthy, so I'm going to go ahead and run this, and then we'll go through the different pieces of it. But I wanted to see a nice, have a nice clean version of it. If you want to get this code, it will be as a link underneath uh, in the comments, and it'll, the full code will be on the website on my blog. So there's the whole construction of it. And just to give you the highlights of it, there's the with statement. This defines the, the table or the common table and its columns. Here's the base condition of the recursion. Here's the recursive part of the recursion. And those are combined with a union. And then here is the select statement that selects all the records from the common table. All right, so let's look at the records. And now what we see is all the different levels. So we see Fuller uh, is at the top of the hierarchy. And then the next five are all at the first level of the hierarchy. And they all report to Fuller. And notice that their reports to all go to the employee ID. And then at the next level, we have three records. So Suyama, King, and Dodsworth all report to five, which is Buchanan. And it continues down to four, uh, four deep in the hierarchy. Now, I, I've annotated this query so that we can talk a little bit about each part of it. So 
Um, at the top, we have the def definition of the common table expression. Now, it's tempting to call this a temporary table, but temporary tables are different. Temporary tables are actual objects that are created in the database engine, and they ha are semi-permanent. Uh, so they stay there until you drop them or they go out of scope, so depending on how you how you define them. So this, the scope of this common table expression is the very next statement. That's the only, it only lives until the very next statement and it does not create an extra object, an additional object in the query uh, or in the SQL engine. This is really more of a syntax uh, trick or a phrasing uh, change. So this is, you can think of this more like doing a subquery or doing a view. So, uh, or another way to think of it is that the, this is actually uh, compiled in line. Think of it as inline code. So I'm giving it a name, I'm showing the columns. Now the first part of this is the base condition to the recursion. And um, the main thing is that these are the records that have no boss. In other words, the reports to is null. And the way I'm defining it is that the employee ID, last name, and reports to. So notice, here's, here is the base. Here's Fuller is my base condition. There, reports to is null, which matches up to there. And I'm defining for any record where the reports to is null. The boss's last name is the same as the employee's last name, and the depth is zero. I just arbitrarily said that anybody who has a reports to of null is at depth of zero, so I am zero indexing this hierarchy. So that's the base condition, and then I union that with the recursive definition. And the thing that makes this recursive is that I'm joining the employees table with the common table expression inside of the definition of the common table expression. So these are employees that report to employees and their bosses. All right. So for these people, um, each of the employees is uh, reports to employees and their bosses. So this is the boss's last name and the depth is incrementing. So I'm, I'm adding one to the person above it. And then finally, so this parenthesis here is the end of the definition of the common table expression. And now what I'm doing is, is I'm actually selecting records from that common table expression. Just defining a common table expression will not give you any records you have to select from the common table expression. So in order to see what's going on, visualize this, I've taken all the records that came out of this common table expression and ordered them by depth, just like they are in the result set here, but in text, and annotated them. So you can think of the recursion happening this way, is that here's my base condition, that's the uh, the record that's defined in part A of the common table expression. And then in part B, all of these records are one level below Fuller. So what's happening is, notice that they all have a reports to of two, and two is in the list, uh, you know, two is the employee ID of Fuller, right? So these all exist in the list above. At the second level of recursion, Suyama, King, and Dodsworth all report to uh, five, who is Buchanan. So they are all exist in the list above them. Then Klein reports to Suyama, which is in the list above. And then Jones and Johnson report to 11, which is there. So this is the fourth level. And it's important to realize that it, it actually attempts to go to a fifth level. So it's looking to see if anybody reports to Jones or has a reports to of 12 or a reports to of 13, but there's no one there, so the recursion ends. So um, I've annotated that a little bit, a little bit more, but um, there's the logic behind it. And uh, in this case, we only have four levels, but this recursion is generic or general so that it will 
uh, continue on. If there are 16 levels or 100 levels, it will continue on. So uh, this is a complex topic. I'll probably give more, uh, more examples of this in future videos, but there's a simple example of recursion. Thanks for watching.